Let's set the scene. After watching many guides and spending many days, you successfully created your own keyboard. You sent it off to get manufactured and today it arrived at your doorstep. Excitedly, you tear it open, plug it in and nothing. You panic. Maybe you wired something wrong. Maybe you forgot your connection to the USB. Maybe you just completely f up. But suddenly you realize there's no firmware yet. You breathe a sigh of relief. Now that you know the problem, it should be smooth sailing from here, right? Well, you take a look through YouTube. Lots and lots of very detailed guides. All great videos. But you don't want to have to climb another Everest just to get your keyboard to do keyboard things. Well, in today's video, I'll try and take you through my personal method in creating a very basic but working keyboard firmware. Welcome to the first episode of 5 Minute Fridays. Before we begin, to not waste your time, this applies only to the ATmega 32U2 4 and AT90 USB 1286. These are the most common, so most likely you'll be able to follow this guide. But if not, I cannot ensure that it will work. Second, this guide is very basic, and it just meant you can go ahead and start testing your keys. Thus, things like layers and basic keys will work, however, RGB controls and backlights will not be included. With the disclaimers out of the way, the time is 4pm. Let's start the clock. With the timer started, let's begin. First, open up this website, kbfirmware.com. Next, open up this website, keyboardlayouteditor.com. Finally, open up whatever schematic viewer you like. Go ahead and upload or open your schematic. Okay, perfect. So you should be able to see what microcontroller you have. I am using the ATMUU34. So first, go ahead and switch to the KLE editor and open up one of these presets. Since my keyboard is a 40%, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. You want to design this keyboard as similar to the layout as your keyboard as possible. If you want it pre-layout mapped, you can also do it in this step. The important part is not so much what keys are where, but mostly that you got enough keys on each row. You want to match that best you can to avoid problems. So with that done, go ahead and head onto the raw data tab. Go ahead and copy that, and head back onto KB Firmware. Click import, and ensure that your wiring is correct. This is why the number of keys on each row is extremely important. Assuming that this is correct for your keyboard, head on to pins, and then select your controller. So again, I'm using the AT Mega 32U4, so that's what I'm going to use here. Now go ahead and go on your schematic viewer. As long as you did it correctly, you should have taps for each one of these. So for example, let's start with row 1. On AT Mega controllers, you will see a P in front of the letters. Just go ahead and ignore that, and just use the letter and the number. So for example here, row 0 is B7. Go ahead on the go ahead onto keyboard firmware, go ahead and select the correct one. So this is row 0, B7. And that's honestly pretty much it. You just keep repeating that until you have all your rows and columns. And that's it. Really, it's that simple. As long as your wiring is correct and you match all your pins correctly, you can go ahead and edit the key map however you see fit. So for example, if you use Colmac, you can go ahead and start editing the layout here. Macros, quantum settings, I'm just going to go skip through that. Go ahead and click compile. It will take a little while generating your hex file. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and use whatever flashing software you want to flash it onto your keyboard. Personally, I use QMK Toolbox. Assuming you didn't mess up the wiring or anything of the sort, your keyboard should now be working. Alas, no matter how hard we try, something always seems to go wrong. So don't worry if it doesn't work perfectly the first time. Despite this technique technically working, I strongly recommend you learn how to properly create firmware with tools such as QMK. This firmware creator has reached the end of its life and is quite a good bit out of date. Many features will be missing, and of course, there's no guarantee that this will work in the future. 
In any case, hopefully this quick guide worked for you. Thanks for watching, leave any questions in the comments, and a quick shout out to Jacob for recommending this.